The Zalkari were a species that had carved their name into the annals of galactic history through sheer force and tactical brilliance. Towering figures with hardened exoskeletons, they were bred for combat, with minds as sharp as their blades. In every conflict they had entered, they had emerged victorious, leaving behind a trail of vanquished foes and conquered worlds. Their reputation was one of invincibility, a race that had never been bested in the art of war. They were revered, feared, and respected across the galaxy, not just for their physical prowess but for their strategic genius that had outmaneuvered even the most cunning adversaries. When the Zalkari set their sights on a resource-rich planet on the fringes of their empire, they expected little resistance. The planet, though valuable, was claimed by a species they considered inferior, humans. To the Zalkari, humanity was a curious anomaly, a species that had advanced rapidly but lacked the raw power and discipline that the Zalkari valued. In their eyes, humans were not true warriors, merely clever survivors who relied on technology and luck. The Zalkari saw this as an opportunity to remind the galaxy of their supremacy, to demonstrate once again that no one could stand against them. The challenge was issued with the confidence of a predator certain of its prey. The terms were simple, a duel to decide the fate of the planet. The Zalkari anticipated a battle that would allow them to showcase their martial skills, to crush any human resistance with the might of their warriors. They prepared for war, mobilizing their forces with the precision of a well-oiled machine. Their leaders spoke of glory and inevitable victory, confident that this would be another swift conquest to add to their storied legacy. But when the human response arrived, it was not what the Zalkari had expected. There was no bluster, no threat of retaliation, no grand declarations of resistance. Instead, the humans accepted the duel, but with a condition that left the Zalkari momentarily stunned. The humans proposed a war without weapons. No guns, no ships, no blades, just a contest of endurance, intellect, and strategy. The Zalkari were perplexed. This was not how wars were fought. To them, combat was physical, a direct confrontation where strength and skill were the ultimate deciders. The idea of a war without weapons seemed almost ludicrous, an insult to their traditions. The Zalkari leaders debated the proposal, torn between their disdain for the concept and their curiosity about the human's audacity. Some argued that to accept such terms would be to undermine their honor, to engage in a farce that held no real value. But others, intrigued by the boldness of the challenge, saw it as an opportunity to prove their superiority in a new way. If the humans wished to play games, the Zalkari would show them that they could dominate in any arena. After all, they reasoned, humans were known for their cunning, but that cunning had never been enough to stand against true warriors. Ultimately, the decision was made to accept the challenge. The Zalkari, confident in their abilities, saw no reason to fear a contest without weapons. They believed that their discipline, their tactical acumen, and their unyielding spirit would carry them to victory, no matter the form of the duel. The terms were set, and the galaxy watched with bated breath, curious to see how this unorthodox conflict would unfold. As the duel approached, the Zalkari prepared as they always did, meticulously, with every detail accounted for. They studied the humans, trying to anticipate what tricks they might employ. But beneath their confidence, there was a flicker of uncertainty, a small voice that questioned whether they truly understood what they were up against. They had never faced an enemy that fought without weapons, and the very concept was alien to them. Still, they dismissed these doubts, reassuring themselves that they were the superior race, that no species could match them in any form of combat. The stage was set, the terms agreed upon. The Zalkari prepared to meet the humans on a battlefield unlike any they had known, confident that, once again, they would prove their dominance. Yet, as the moment drew closer, they could not shake the feeling that this challenge was different, that the humans had something planned that they had not yet grasped. But whatever it was, the Zalkari were certain of one thing, they would crush it, as they had crushed every other challenge before. The duel began with the first of many competitions— a test of endurance set on a barren moon, known for its extreme temperatures and brutal conditions. The Zalkari, confident in their physical superiority, expected to dominate. They had trained for this, their bodies honed to withstand harsh environments, 
their minds disciplined to ignore pain and fatigue. They moved with purpose, pushing forward with a rhythm and precision that spoke of their warrior culture, their certainty of victory evident in every step. Yet, as the hours passed, something unexpected began to happen. The humans, who the Zalkari had expected to falter early on, showed no signs of stopping. Instead of succumbing to the harsh conditions, the humans seemed to adapt, adjusting their pace, conserving their energy. While the Zalkari powered through, determined to finish quickly, the humans paced themselves, taking calculated pauses, using minimal movements to conserve strength. As temperatures soared and dropped, the humans seemed unfazed, using simple but effective techniques to protect themselves from the elements. They fashioned makeshift shelters from the surrounding environment, shared resources among themselves, and showed an uncanny ability to endure. When the first endurance test ended, it was clear that the humans had not only kept pace but, in many cases, had outlasted their Zalkari opponents. What had seemed like a guaranteed victory for the Zalkari had turned into a surprising draw. Their frustration began to simmer. This was not what they had anticipated. They could not understand how the humans, who had appeared so physically unimpressive, had managed to match their efforts. The next challenge was one of intellect, a complex puzzle that required both logical thinking and creative problem-solving. The Zalkari, skilled tacticians, approached it with their usual methodical mindset, analyzing the puzzle in parts, attempting to find the most efficient solution. They moved quickly, confident that their experience in strategic warfare would give them the edge. But once again, the humans defied expectations. The humans approached the puzzle differently, breaking it down in unconventional ways, attacking the problem from multiple angles simultaneously. They collaborated, shared ideas freely, and utilized each participant's strengths in ways the Zalkari had not anticipated. They experimented with unorthodox methods, trying solutions that seemed illogical at first but often led to breakthroughs. Where the Zalkari relied on proven tactics, the humans embraced flexibility and improvisation. Within minutes, they had outpaced their rivals, solving parts of the puzzle the Zalkari had not even reached. The Zalkari, who were accustomed to linear thinking and strict adherence to established tactics, found themselves baffled. They had anticipated a straightforward battle of wits, but the humans turned it into something else entirely, a dynamic, ever-shifting competition where the rules seemed to change by the second. Their frustration grew as they realized their usual strategies were ineffective against such a fluid, unpredictable approach. By the third challenge, a grueling test of survival in a simulated hostile environment, the Zalkari's confidence was visibly shaken. They entered the arena, prepared for a battle of brute strength, but the humans once again flipped the script. Instead of confronting the environment head-on, the humans used their knowledge of biology, chemistry, and engineering to adapt the surroundings to their advantage. They purified water using improvised filters, constructed tools from available materials, and developed strategies to reduce exposure to hazards. They used every trick, every bit of knowledge they had accumulated over generations of living on a world where survival required constant adaptation and innovation. The Zalkari found themselves increasingly out of their depth. They were warriors, trained to face challenges through force and endurance, but they were not accustomed to such a broad range of skills being used against them. The humans seemed to have an answer for every obstacle, turning what should have been weaknesses, lack of raw strength, smaller stature, unfamiliarity with certain technologies, into advantages through sheer ingenuity and adaptability. The Zalkari's frustration was palpable. Their usual tactics, dominate, overwhelm, outlast, were failing them. They could not comprehend how their opponents kept finding new ways to turn the tables. Every time they believed they had the humans cornered, their rivals would surprise them with another unexpected move, another creative solution. The Zalkari, for the first time in many generations, felt the sting of uncertainty. As the initial competitions concluded, the Zalkari leaders gathered to discuss their next steps. They were not used to this kind of warfare, one that did not rely on physical might or rigid strategy, but on a fluid, dynamic approach that shifted with every challenge. They knew they had to adapt, but they did not yet understand how. All they knew was that this duel was not going according to plan, 
and their frustration grew with every passing moment. The humans were proving to be a different kind of warrior race, one that fought not with muscle and weapons, but with wit, creativity, and an unyielding will to adapt. As the duel continued, the humans made an unexpected move that caught the Zalkari completely off guard. Instead of relying solely on their skills and ingenuity, they began to reach out to the neutral spectators, other alien species who had gathered to observe the contest. The Zalkari had considered these bystanders irrelevant, believing that the duel would be decided through direct confrontation. But the humans saw an opportunity. They began to engage with these observers, speaking with them, listening to their perspectives, and most importantly, forming alliances. The humans moved with purpose, initiating conversations with various species. They spoke with charm and confidence, using logic, empathy, and persuasion to win their favor. They offered insights, shared knowledge, and demonstrated an understanding of interspecies relations that the Zalkari had never bothered to cultivate. They knew that influence could be as powerful as any weapon, and they wielded their words like a carefully honed blade. Gradually, they began to sway opinions, turning neutral spectators into quiet supporters. This approach was entirely alien to the Zalkari. They had always relied on force and intimidation to win battles. They had never thought to win hearts and minds. The concept of using words as weapons was foreign to them. As the humans continued to negotiate and form alliances, the Zalkari found themselves on unfamiliar ground. They could not understand why these other species were suddenly showing a preference for the human side. To them, strength was what mattered, not diplomacy. Yet, the humans seemed to be turning the tide without even engaging in combat. The effects of these alliances began to manifest in subtle but significant ways. In the next round of competitions, the humans received crucial assistance from their new allies. They were provided with information about the terrain, tips on surviving specific environmental challenges, and even access to resources that the Zalkari did not have. A minor alien species helped them navigate through a treacherous landscape that had stymied the Zalkari. Another species, with a deep understanding of a particular chemical compound, offered advice that allowed the humans to neutralize a hazard in record time. The Zalkari watched in frustration as the humans seemed to gain an upper hand from all directions. Every time they thought they had the humans pinned down, their opponents found a new way to turn the tables. The Zalkari leaders convened, trying to make sense of the situation. They were warriors, not diplomats, and they struggled to understand this new form of combat. Their tactics were based on direct confrontation, on overwhelming the enemy with sheer force and superior strategy. But the humans had created a battlefield of influence and negotiation, a place where the Zalkari had no experience. The isolation began to set in. For the first time, the Zalkari felt themselves cut off, surrounded not by enemies wielding weapons but by a web of alliances that they could not penetrate. They could see the humans moving with confidence, buoyed by the support they had garnered, while they found themselves increasingly alone, their usual strategies useless in this new context. The humans had turned the duel into something else, something the Zalkari could not control. The frustration of the Zalkari grew with each passing moment. They attempted to counter the humans' diplomatic maneuvers, but their efforts were clumsy and ineffective. They had no practice in this kind of engagement, no understanding of how to build trust or forge connections with other species. Their attempts to intimidate or coerce were met with resistance and disdain, further isolating them from potential allies. They watched helplessly as the humans continued to gain support, their influence spreading like a ripple through the assembled crowd. The Zalkari leaders realized they were losing ground not because of any direct confrontation, but because of their inability to adapt to this new form of warfare. They were accustomed to battles of strength, of strategy, of tactics on a field where every move was visible. But here, the humans were fighting a battle of hearts and minds, a conflict fought in whispers and agreements, in gestures of goodwill and shared purpose. It was a battlefield the Zalkari had never prepared for and they were beginning to see the consequences of that oversight. The duel continued, but the balance had shifted. The humans, with their newfound allies and strategic advantages, began to pull ahead. The Zalkari felt their confidence waver for the first time in generations. They had underestimated these humans, 
who had turned what was supposed to be a simple contest into a complex game of influence and negotiation. They were learning, painfully, that strength alone was not enough, that sometimes, the most powerful weapon was the ability to adapt and connect with others. And so, the Zalkari found themselves facing a new reality, a conflict they could not win through force or intimidation alone. They were being outmaneuvered, not by an enemy's strength, but by their ability to think differently, to use every tool at their disposal, and to fight in ways the Zalkari had never imagined. The final challenge was announced, a complex trial designed to test every aspect of a competitor's abilities, survival in a hostile environment, problem-solving under pressure, and raw endurance. The Zalkari, recognizing the significance of this moment, prepared with grim determination. They had faced countless trials of strength and strategy, but this one was different. This was not just a battle for resources. It was a battle for pride, for their reputation as the galaxy's foremost warriors. They knew they had to win, to reassert their dominance, and prove that the humans were not a match for their prowess. The challenge began in a desolate, unforgiving landscape, a barren wasteland scorched by extreme temperatures during the day and freezing cold at night. The terrain was riddled with natural traps, unstable ground, and hostile creatures. The participants were given minimal supplies, forced to rely on their wits and endurance to survive. The Zalkari moved swiftly, relying on their brute strength and honed survival skills. They sought to overpower the environment, pushing through obstacles with sheer force, confident in their physical superiority. The humans, however, approached the challenge differently. They did not try to overpower the environment, they adapted to it. They used their allies' knowledge to navigate the landscape, relying on the insights of species that had experience with similar terrains. They moved cautiously, observing, learning, and using every resource available to them. Where the Zalkari charged ahead, the humans used strategy and patience, carefully selecting their paths and conserving energy. As the challenge progressed, the humans continued to excel. They anticipated the dangers, using creative solutions to avoid traps and navigate the hostile landscape. They built shelters from the natural materials around them, employed simple yet effective techniques to purify water, and found ways to gather food that the Zalkari had overlooked. They worked in teams, communicating silently, sharing information quickly and efficiently. Their endurance was not just physical, but mental, a relentless determination to overcome every obstacle no matter how daunting. The Zalkari, growing frustrated, realized they were falling behind. They were accustomed to winning through strength and direct action, but the humans were using every ounce of their resourcefulness and adaptability to turn the environment to their advantage. The Zalkari leaders, sensing the gravity of the situation, decided to make a final, desperate push. They ordered their warriors to ignore all distractions, to move as fast as possible through the terrain hoping to regain the lead through sheer determination. But the harder they pushed, the more they found themselves thwarted. The humans anticipated their movements, using traps and decoys to slow them down, forcing them to waste precious time and energy. The Zalkari, unaccustomed to such tactics, struggled to adapt. Their frustration grew as they realized they were being outmaneuvered at every turn. They could not understand how the humans seemed to know their every move how they seemed always to be one step ahead. The final phase of the challenge brought the competitors to a cliffside, where they were required to ascend a steep, jagged rock face without any climbing equipment. It was a test of pure endurance and problem-solving. The Zalkari, strong and agile, began their ascent with confidence. They relied on their physical strength to pull themselves up, using their natural abilities to scale the rock. But the humans approached with a different strategy. They formed a human chain, helping each other, using leverage and counterweight, creating makeshift harnesses and anchors with the materials they had gathered. They climbed steadily, methodically, each move calculated to conserve energy and ensure safety. As the Zalkari neared the top, they noticed the humans closing in, moving with a speed and coordination they had not expected. The Zalkari pushed harder, but their muscles were tiring their grip faltering from the intensity of the climb. They had relied on raw strength, but now they found themselves drained, struggling to maintain their pace. 
The humans, however, showed no signs of slowing down. They continued their ascent, inch by inch, using teamwork and strategy to maintain their momentum. Desperation set in. The Zalkari made one last effort, pushing themselves to the limit, but it was too late. The humans reached the summit first, their spirits unbroken, their minds sharp. They had used every skill, every piece of knowledge, every bit of strength and resilience they possessed to achieve the victory. The Zalkari, arriving moments later, could only stare in disbelief. They had been outmatched in every way, not through brute force, but through ingenuity, adaptability, and the power of cooperation. The challenge ended, and the humans were declared the winners. The Zalkari, their faces marked with exhaustion and frustration, knew they had lost more than just a duel. They had lost a battle of wits and endurance against an enemy they had underestimated from the start. The realization hit them hard. Humans were a different kind of warrior race, one that fought with more than just weapons, one that used every tool, every bit of knowledge, and every ally to its advantage. The humans had proven that strength alone was not enough to win. Victory could come from unexpected places, from those who dared to think differently, who refused to be limited by conventional methods. The Zalkari, once so certain of their superiority, now found themselves humbled, realizing that they had faced a foe unlike any other, a race that embodied a new definition of what it meant to be a warrior. The Zalkari stood in silence, their pride wounded, their confidence shaken. They had never known defeat like this one not marked by bloodshed or destruction, but by strategy, endurance, and alliance. The humans had not met them on their terms, had not played the game by the rules the Zalkari had mastered. And yet, the outcome was undeniable. The humans had won, and the Zalkari, despite their martial prowess and tactical brilliance, had no choice but to concede defeat. The Zalkari leaders, standing before their assembled warriors, took a deep breath and spoke the words that tasted bitter in their mouths. They acknowledged the humans' victory, admitting that their opponents had not triumphed through brute force, but by a profound understanding of strategy and the strength found in unity. They had witnessed a different kind of warfare, one fought not with swords or ships, but with intellect, resilience, and the ability to adapt and innovate. The Zalkari, though humbled, recognized that they had been outmaneuvered by an enemy who had mastered a different set of skills, who had used every tool at their disposal to secure a win. The concession was broadcast across the galaxy, and the news spread quickly. Other species listened in shock, disbelief, and curiosity. Humanity, once seen as unpredictable upstarts, had proven themselves in a way no one had anticipated. They had won a duel against the mighty Zalkari without firing a single shot, without raising a single weapon. The galaxy buzzed with speculation and conversation, the term, warrior race, now infused with a new meaning. Species that had dismissed humanity as reckless and brash now saw them in a new light, unpredictable, yes, but also adaptable, creative, and formidable. Discussions erupted in every corner of the galactic community. How had the humans done it? How had they managed to turn the tide against a species so steeped in tradition, in combat excellence, in tactical superiority? What had they understood that others had not? The humans, it seemed, were more than just fighters. They were strategists, diplomats, thinkers, and survivors. They were a race that could challenge the very foundations of what it meant to be strong. For the Zalkari, this defeat was more than a simple loss it was a lesson. In the quiet of their chambers, their leaders gathered to reflect on what had happened. One of their oldest commanders, a veteran of countless wars, spoke with a voice that was weary but clear. He admitted that they had been blind, that they had failed to see the true strength of their opponents. They had underestimated the value of adaptability, of thinking beyond tradition, of seeing the world not in terms of conquest but in terms of possibilities. He spoke of the humans' willingness to forge alliances, to learn from others, to embrace diversity as a strength rather than a weakness. He noted how the humans had turned every disadvantage into an advantage, how they had thrived where the Zalkari had struggled. He realized that they had not simply faced a different kind of enemy, they had faced a different kind of warrior. The humans had shown them that there were other ways to win, 
ways that did not require overpowering an opponent but outthinking them, outlasting them, and outmaneuvering them. As the reflection continued, the Zalkari commander felt a new respect grow within him, one he had never felt for an enemy before. He understood that they had encountered a species that valued not just victory, but the means by which it was achieved. The humans had taught them that strength could come in many forms, sometimes in the form of a weapon, and sometimes in the form of a word, a thought, or a simple act of resilience. Across the galaxy, the perceptions of humanity continued to shift. They were no longer seen as merely reckless or unpredictable. They were now regarded as a force to be reckoned with, a race that could adapt to any challenge, that could find a way to win even when the odds seemed impossible. The term, Deathworlder, once a dismissive label, now carried a sense of awe. Humanity had demonstrated that their strength lay not in a single trait, but in their ability to think beyond limitations, to create opportunities where none seemed to exist. The Zalkari, once certain of their place at the top of the warrior hierarchy, now faced a new reality. They had learned that to be a warrior did not just mean to be the strongest or the fastest. It meant to be the one who could adapt, innovate, and overcome. They had encountered a race that embodied these principles in a way they had never seen before. And in that realization, they found a new understanding of what it truly meant to be strong. The duel was over but its impact would ripple across the galaxy for years to come. The Zalkari, though defeated, had gained a new perspective, one that would shape their future in ways they could not yet fully understand. And humanity, now recognized as a different kind of warrior race, stood ready for whatever challenge came next, knowing that their greatest weapon was not in their hands, but in their minds and hearts.